I'm Billy Brim, my daughter Shelly. We call it the prophetic witness because uh, God called me to be a witness. And then the prophecies of the Bible just tell us where we are. And yes. right now, there are a lot of people that need to know where we are. And I trust you brought the light with you today. You brought your Bible because this is the light that shines, the prophecies in the dark place. Now, we have already done, and you need to go back. Perhaps you can go with the very station you're watching on, um, and, and maybe they have archives. We have them online a little bit later getting up than some, but we put them right away on YouTube. So you can go to... Um, I think it's called Original Billy Brim, Official Billy Brim, Official <laughs> Billy Brim YouTube. And, and you can get what's happened before because we've already started this prophetic book of Zechariah, which is to the Old Testament like the book of Revelation to the New. In fact, they talk about the same war. It begins with eight visions that the prophet had in one night. He was fully awake. There was a little break between them. And we went into detail in the first vision in our last session. Now we're going to look at the third vision. A focus of Zechariah is Jerusalem and the future and the Messiah and what's going to be happening there even through the millennium. So these visions are good and comforting words because it, they were in a bad situation then. They were down in the miry clay. They had come home from Babylonian captivity. Things were not good. They were terrible. But God gave them these to encourage them, these words. So we're going to skip this. Every one of the visions are, are about the future and about God's plans. And Shelley uh, is going to read the third vision, and I'll interrupt her every so often and, and comment. This third vision is found in Zechariah chapter 2, and we'll begin reading with verse 1. I lifted up my eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Now, this is uh, the measuring line in his hand. He's going to build something. And that measuring line, it tells you it's going to be something solid, something that's going to happen right here on earth. And then said I, whither goest thou? And he said unto me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. So he saw a man with a measuring line in his hand and he spoke to that man. Now the interpreting angel, we found out there is an interpreting angel, is going to speak to Zechariah. And behold, the angel that talked with me, or in me, went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. Now we got two angels there. Mm -hmm. And said unto him, run, speak to this young man. The young man is Zechariah. The second angel says, run and speak to this young man, Zechariah, here. Saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. See, in those days they built walls. But it says Jerusalem's going to be rebuilt and it's not going to have walls. It's that way today, folks. Yes. It used to have walls and the people lived all inside. But now we're living in the days there's so many people, there's no walls. Verse 5. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. God's going to be the protection of Jerusalem. He's going to be a fire roundabout. You're going to find in the book of Zechariah, excuse me, uh, Ezekiel, and it ends with, he's going to be the glory of that city, and he will be Jehovah Shammah to Jerusalem. Jehovah is there. All right, now down to uh, verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, Yahweh Sabaoth, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. God calls Jerusalem the apple of his eye. Now remember that term, the nations that spoiled you? I'm going to be studying some more, so I'm going to remember that. So, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. Mm. For he that touches you, touches Jerusalem, pokes God in the eye, touches the apple of God's eye. For behold, Shelley verse 9, For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. God said, I'm going to wave my hand over those nations that spoil you. In a way, I'm going to erase them. They're not going to be found around during, during the great millennial time. Kind of like your smart board. You just yes, wave you your just hand wave and your it goes bye-bye. It goes by. Now, we're going to go we're skipping way over. We have to skip so much because of time. But we're going to go over now to chapter 9 of the book of Isaiah. 
And it, it's another section. Isaiah has four sections. The first, the section of repentance, and then the eight visions, and then some historical things. And then in chapter 9, it starts the last part of the book, chapters 9 through 14. And uh, Zechariah uh, Barron, who wrote this book, David Barron, I've studied this book of Zechariah for years, and I've studied this book. You can see how it's wrinkled up. Yeah, I see all, some coffee stains all there. Coffee stains and everything. It's wonderful. I've studied well this loved. book of Zechariah for years, and I consider Barron's opening statements to chapter 9 to be key to the whole of the book, mm. to understanding its prophecies. In the prophets' day, it, it, it begins, and it even speaks with things that were kind of in the immediate future, but then it skips over to the end of days in which we live with a clear view to the millennial kingdom of Christ. When we taught this at 3BI, we called it Zechariah with emphasis on the millennium. Powerful. Powerful. Now, here are the statements that are on 285 of this book. It's going to be talking about the last six chapters, 9, 10, and 11, 12, 13, and 14, two sections. Yes, so put up your ears. The Beep. overthrow of world power and the establishment of Messiah's kingdom may be given as the epitome of the last chapters of Zechariah. Two oracles make up the whole section of the second half of the book. Chapters 9 through 11, that's one oracle. Chapters 12 through 14, that's another both sections treat of war between the heathen world and Israel, though in different ways. The first oracle, chapters 9 through 11, are the judgment through which God, through which the Gentile world power over Israel is finally destroyed. I'm going to read that again. Yeah. Yes. Chapters 9 through 11, the judgment through which Gentile world power over Israel is finally destroyed. In the second, chapters 12 through 14, the judgment through which Israel itself is sifted and purged in the final great conflict of the nations with the nations and transformed into the holy nation of Jehovah that's the leading topic. So the second, chapters 12 through 14, the first, 9 through 11, is judgment of the nations. Mm -hmm. 9 through, four, excuse me, 12 through 14 is the judgment through which Israel itself is sifted and purged in the final great conflict with nations and transformed into the holy nation of Jehovah. Now, it's going to talk about some wars. It, it speaks of war between the heathen world and Israel. And then, yes. Now we're going to look here uh, at, at the wars that are upcoming. As we are here this day in June, we're looking up at upcoming wars. If any of them have already materialized, <laughs> then you can know it. There are three wars which are upcoming at this time. The first is Ezekiel 38, 39. This is called a Gog and Magog war. This is a war where uh, nations headed up under an evil spirit named Gog, moving and working down through nations, they make an invasion of Israel. The second is Zechariah 12 and 14, 12 through 14 really, and Revelation 16, 16, which is the battle of Armageddon. And the third is in Revelation 20. It's another Gog-Magog war at the end of the thousand years when Satan is loosed out of his prison. Now, Zechariah 12 and 14, we're going to get to this war right here, the Battle of Armageddon. But this war right here, Ezekiel 38 and 39, there's kind of a, a connection with it in Zechariah 9. So... We'll leave that up there just for a bit for you. Now we're going to go to Zechariah chapter 9. 
And verse 1, shall you please read there? The burden of the word of the Lord in the hand, land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof. When the eyes of men, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Lord. So remember, these chapters are going to have to do with wars, uh, with the nations against Israel mm -hmm. and judgment of those nations. So the burden of the Lord. Now this word is the Hebrew word masa, burden, and it's never masa. used in a title except when the vision is heavy and full of burden and toil. It is used by Isaiah entirely as the heading to the prophecies which contain threatenings and announce judgments against the nations who have acted as oppressors of Israel. Masa, the burden. It is unquestionably used in the sense of a burden and the prophecies to which it is affixed are mainly of woe and disaster. So we begin here with this, this section is going to treat of war with the heathen world in Israel. And everything is going to start, this verse tells us where it starts. The Masa, the burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach, that's an area, ancient area around Damascus. Mm -hmm. And Damascus shall be the rest thereof. Hmm. Now, Damascus shall be its resting place. I'm reading you now from David Barron's book. The judgment, which is the burden of this prophecy, shall first of all have Damascus at its, as its goal. And from that center, it shall spread itself over the whole district, which the passage goes on to describe. So the last, this section right here, is going to be the wars where the heathen world and, and, and is going to be a judgment of the wars, the judgment of the Gentile world powers over Israel. It's going to begin this final judgment. Damascus will be its resting place. Kind of like a catalyst? Or? Well, it's the resting place. The it's rest. the punk. That's where it starts. Uh -huh. It's like judgment. It rests right there. It rests right there on Damascus. Then it spreads out to the whole region. Hmm. I've been watching this for years. The judgments have their resting place at Damascus. I've been watching this. <laughs> and now, lo and behold, lo and behold, Damascus. <coughs> Damascus is um, one of the oldest. It's the capital of Syria. It's the oldest capital in the world. And according to some, it is the fourth holiest city in Islam. It is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. It has never uh, known such a... Or yeah. No? Wow. So we're watching this. We're watching this burden. It starts on Damascus. And it tells us where it starts. It starts on Damascus. And when does it start? This verse, this verse right here. When the eyes of man as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Lord. Yes. A lot of different translations don't get this quite right. Mm. And Barron says, this King James is the best. It's going to happen when the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Lord. So we see that it's going to start in Damascus. Um. The Bible, you interpret the Bible with the Bible. So we find another burden of Damascus from the prophet Isaiah. Read there, Shelley, Isaiah chapter 17, 1. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Well, here we see in Zechariah that everything is going to start in Damascus. And here we see in Isaiah, it's going to be a ruinous heap. A little more detail. Yeah. yeah. It's the capital of Syria. It's the oldest capital in the world. Fourth holiest city in Islam. One of the oldest continuous cities in the world, continually inhabited. Never, ever, 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 ever has it been a ruinous heap. But as we... <laughs> here we are. As we are here, right here, wow. Damascus ain't what it used to be. The Bible's true. The Bible is true. 
So we see that Damascus, uh, now as we're sitting here, uh, Syria's been overtaken by Iran, mm-hmm. ancient Persia. She's not what she used She's to be. She's not what she used to be. She's really ruled out of Tehran. Mm-hmm. As we're doing this in June, I don't know what's, as we're doing this, and we're actually doing this before June, a couple months before, because we have to, right. to get it ready for all the television stations and everything. So two months back, I don't know what's happened by the day June is. But we, it, Damascus is not what it used to be. Because Iran has con- taken over Syria, uh-huh. there was a great civil war and it took it over, and it has now been sending weaponry, missiles, down through Syria to get to its proxy, Hezbollah, mm-hmm. because Lebanon isn't what it used to be either. Iran has taken that over. So they have, they have continually bought convoys and they have stored caches of, of um, weaponry in Syria. When the Israelis see this, they bombed them. Good. They bombed those caches. Yes. So they have been, many of them, near Damascus. So in the civil war and in the bombings of Syria, of uh, Israel, Damascus has been hit and shelled. I remember many one times. time we were in Israel and they said Damascus was only 60, six zero, 60 miles away from that point. In Jerusalem. Yeah, so we're talking next door neighbors next here. Next door neighbors. And uh, when, now just recently, Russia has started sending planes to patrol there to try to stop the Israelis from bombing. Who knows what has happened by the time you see this? But we know from the word of God that Damascus is going to end up a ruinous heap. When? Now look at verse 7, 17, 7. Shall he read that? At that day shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. Now that ties in again with Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9 says, the burden of Damascus, everything's going to start there when the eyes of men and all the tribes of Israel shall be toward the Lord. Right. Now here in the 17th chapter, 17th chapter, 7 verse, it says, mankind and Israel are going to be looking toward the Lord. That's Why? Right. That's because he's going to show out big. Good he's for God. He's going to do something big. Yes. Now these verses in Isaiah tie in with the Ezekiel 38, 39 more. We're going to see that. Read, Shelley, Isaiah 17, 12 through 14. Okay. Um, let's see. On verse page four. 12. Oh, I have to, page four. Okay. Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, at evening tide, trouble. And before the morning, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. Now we're reading Isaiah chapter 17. We're reading the chapter which says, Damascus is going to be a ruinous heap. We're reading a chapter which says they're going to everybody be looking at Jehovah. Now it speaks of them that spoil us. Do you remember back in the vision, the third vision? God said, those that spoil you, yes. I'm going to wipe them away. Mm-hmm. So them that spoil us. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, that war right there, which I believe that could happen before the rapture of the church. Here's Ezekiel 38 and 39. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, evil spirit. In the land of Magog, the land of where he operates, the chief prince, the Rosh prince of Meshach, Tubal, and prophesy against him. I don't have time to prove to you. We did Ezekiel 38 and 39. You can get it online with 3BI. We went into detail. But this is uh, most of the ancient sages and people agree. This is an incursion, an invasion into Israel. Um, uh, the, 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 the double kingdom system. He's yes. an evil spirit. God right. doesn't hate the people. No. But he hates this Gog. Yes. And this Gog works down through a peop- uh, governments on the earth. Mm-hmm. So at this time and in this invasion, he will be working down through the government of Russia. Under them and as a strong ally will be Persia. There will be many other peoples, Turkey, and the Bible says many other peoples with you. Mm-hmm. They're going to come down into, into Russia. 
I mean, excuse me, into Israel. Verse 4, and I will turn you back and put hooks in your jaws. He's, God's bringing them down there because he's going to bring them down there to judgment. He's bringing them down into the mountains of Israel. Mm -hmm. And if you read the last verses of Ezekiel 38, he's going to rain hailstones on them. Thus Jehovah of hosts is going to bring supernatural things. And everybody's going to be looking at Jehovah because they see it's God. Just like it says, all the eyes will be looking at him. He's going to show off big. I personally think the war in Ezekiel 38 and 39 could happen at any time and could happen before the rapture of the church. It might be in the same time as the rapture of the church. I don't know. But it's going to be such a war won only by God. Everybody knows it's God. And that is going to, um, to I believe it'll be a great, I believe many Muslims will turn to God. Yes. A great because he said, I, I invite you to read Ezekiel 38, 39 and to and mark every verse which says, I'm doing this so that nations will know I'm Jehovah. Exactly. I'm doing this so that Israel will know I'm Jehovah. Thank you, This Lord. is going to be a great outpouring and a showing of Jehovah. And I believe many who look to Allah are going to say, oh, Allah's not God. No. Jehovah is God. Yes. So, they're impressed with power. They're impressed with power. So and he says here, be prepared. You're going to come down in the last days, in the end of days, and you're going to come down into the people that are gathered out back home against the mountains of Israel, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. You're going to come like a storm. It will be a, 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 an air attack. But look at verse 12. Here's what I want you to see. You're coming to take a spoil uh-huh. and take a prey. They're to turn your hand upon denominator. the desolate church the yes. places. Yes, yes. And then at the end of verse 30, 13, it says, have you come to take a spoil? Now that ties right in with Isaiah chapter 17. Yes. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. Woe to the multitude of people which make a noise like the noise of many seas. I believe that's Ezekiel 38. Mm-hmm. Gog's forces. That make a rushing of like mighty waters. The nation shall rush like many waters, but God shall rebuke them. Thank you. They shall flee far away and be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, evening time trouble, but before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. Ezekiel 38 and 39, did you come down to take a spoil? Isaiah 17. Everything's Isaiah 9, excuse me, Zechariah 9. Everything's going to begin at Damascus. Isaiah 17, it's going to be a ruinous heap. I believe that Damascus is the hook in the jaw to get the people down, that all these three go together, and that we are looking at this end time judgment which be of the nations, which has its, there's been fulfillments before. I mean, but there's going to be fulfillment of the nations who have come against Israel. God's going to deal with it all. And I believe that Damascus could well be the hook in the jaw that brings them down Mm -hmm. and that this is not in the far distant future, but it is in the near distant. Was the incursion into the Ukraine, Ezekiel 38, 39? No, because it has to happen. Ezekiel 38 and 39 happens in the mountains of Israel. Could it lead to it? Yes. Yes. May it already have led to it, mm-hmm. Shelley, by the time this program's on. Like a domino possible. effect. It's possible. Just, yes. But it might be 10 years. Now, I'm not saying I don't know. I'm not the one who knows. There might be a but prize. But I do, I do know that they are connected. They're connected. Folks, I know that was a lot to absorb. It was a lot for me to kind of get <laughs> out, Shelley. But yes. I would invite you to join our classes. The Lord told me, dealt with me so strongly to teach 3BI, Billy Brim Bible Institute, and especially to watch end time things through the eyes of the prophets. So we have this wonderful school online. I I met a lady the other day. She's a professor in a Bible college, a doctor. And she said, I just love the school. So I know that we have the prophet Daniel, we have Revelation, we have Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And if you will contact us and you will mention this broadcast then you will have a one-third off to be a student in the school. One-third off. Now, I hope that by the time this is broadcast, they have Zechariah up. I'm not sure if they will. 
but you can find out. Now, Zechariah, of course, we have this book, this wonderful commentary by David Barron that we're offering to you for $25, including shipping. It's a thick book. And unless you like to study, you don't probably order it. don't order it. But, but it has wonderful delicious. things. Oh, oh, is it good? Oh, it's so Bless good. the Lord. Treasure. And with it, we're going to put in the judgment of the nations just right with it. It'll be shipped to you. Now, of course, Judgment of the Nations, this little mini book, is available online at billybrim.org. So you can order it at any time. And this book, Zechariah, but both of them come together for $25, including shipping. And I do want to encourage you, if at all, you would like to take one of our three BI courses. It's an accredited school, but you don't have to take it for accreditation. You can just take it because you want to know. I want to know. Hey, Jesus, when are you coming? Shalom, shalom. Remember to get your Bible and be back with us next week.